Hi everybody, we're back at Connie's Kitchen. I know it's been a while, but I've been really busy up here at Treetop Lodge. We've had the, the alpaca shearing a couple weeks ago, which was great. And you're going to actually see some of that somewhere on Oct TV, so we'll watch for it. Um, we've had overnights, and we've had wine dinners, and we've got more stuff coming up. We're actually going to have a murder in July, because you know me, I have to be very organized and plan these things. And uh, we've got, like I said, more of the wine dinners coming up and overnights, and we have a wedding is booked for August. We're going to get married in the woods and have the reception in here, and really looking forward to that. So make sure you give me a call if you have an idea or you want to get involved with something we're doing. And I'm talking to a lady later today that's going to come up and do fairy houses here at the lodge because we said you know we've got unicorns but we need fairies too so um, before I get started I'm making a pasta toss salad today a lot of times when I go someplace and you know for a party a picnic what can I bring and they say I'll bring a pasta salad or a toss salad so I kind of started combining the two and it's become very that now that's what people ask for so I've got my water started because I remembered and I've got some bacon browning, so I'll listen to that, and I'll get started on this. Now what I did is I just grabbed, I had a lot of leftover things in the fridge from a, an event this weekend, and it's all good. So I washed it all, and uh, I'm going to start chopping and start building a salad, and I should probably get a bowl. Otherwise it's just all going to lay on the table there, and that's not a very good idea. So, pasta toss salad is just exactly what it says. Everything that you would do in a cold pasta salad and a tossed salad, but it's all in one bowl. So, I'm going to start doing some chopping. So, it's, it's all the usual stuff that I usually work with, but now we're starting to get the nice produce coming in. And as we get in more into summer, it'll get better and better and fresher and fresher. And you know me, I always have to add that red onion. That's where we start. And this is so easy to make in quantity. I mean, you could just really make it up quickly and serve a lot of people. So that's what we're going to do. Today it's my lunch, because I'm up here all day. And uh, I tend to forget to eat. So today this is my lunch. I'll have some pretzel buns and some whipped butter with it. And it will be delicious. There we go. So my nephew Gage, I talk about him a lot on the show. He's home for the summer, and he's been working up here at the lodge helping. We're starting now that the inside is pretty much the way we like it. We're starting to work outside, clean the gardens, do some projects and such. And he wasn't able to come today because he had to go to complete his driver's training. So I tried to get the unicorns to pitch in, but I don't know. I don't know whether it's they're just you know, enjoying their own press or what it is, but I'm really getting more and more difficult all the time. So I think I've got a couple of them out there raking right now. I'll have to go check on them in a little bit. But, you know, when they, I figured they should do something. They're up here all the time. They even, a couple of them even snuck over to the barns during the alpaca shearing. So that was fun. Got some pea pods. Now you can just throw pea pods in just like that. Oh, we got some bacon coming up. I know, I'm not finishing sentences again. Got my pasta ready to go in. For this pasta salad, I like to use kind of a heartier, this is a masticcioli noodle. Um, the small pastas, they really just don't hold up. They kind of break up. So a little bit of Himalayan salt in my pasta water. Give it a little, give it a little zhuzh to get it going. There we go. And then I'll get back to the pea pods. I think that bacon's just about ready. There we go, put that there for now. See, I got through that whole thing without forgetting it was there and burning it. Now I'll go back to this. Now the pea pods you can just throw in just like this. But I'm gonna, these are kind of big, so I'm going to just cut them in half. And again, like a lot of the things that I prepare, I want everything to be very visible. Because then not only is it pretty, but if someone encounters something that they're not terribly fond of, it's easy enough to remove it. If everything is diced up so fine that you can't see it, then people aren't as attracted to it, I guess. These tomatillos, I use these for, I make a tomatillo salsa that people love. And I happened to see these, so I had them in the fridge and didn't use them. 
and they started to get a little wrinkly on top but they're still nice and firm and tomatillo kind of looks like a green tomato it's got a nice firm texture and it's very porous so it draws up the salad dressing really nice it gives it a on its own it doesn't have a lot of flavor but it's got good texture and it kind of carries flavor well so I use those when I can get them and here I am chopping chopping so last Sunday we had a wine dinner our monthly wine dinner I made veal scallopini and it turned out perfectly the trick to that was I had to actually stop while the other courses were going on and fire the veal as we were going because it's one to two minutes really per side and it's done to get it to the table juicy and tender and oh was it juicy and tender and then when the dinner was over it was still light out it was a beautiful evening so I invited everyone to join me on the deck for whatever so we went out on the deck and the gentleman had cigars and they finished up what what little wine was left and we just had a very nice nice evening getting to know each other so like I've said before dinners and such up here are not big formal affairs it's just about relaxing and enjoying and that we did and then there was just a couple of pieces of veal my sweet husband set aside for me because I hadn't had a chance to try it and I got to try it the next day and it was still good so I was very pleased by that because veal's veal's not inexpensive and the trick is if it goes if you go too far with it it's like shoe leather it's so easy to ruin it but this was beautiful and I think in July I'm gonna do grilling we're gonna grill several different types of shish kebabs grilled vegetables all that kind of stuff gazpacho and I'm actually going to begin making my sorbets from scratch which is something I haven't done yet so here we go with our green onions and again I washed this all before you got here because I didn't think you'd want to watch me stand at the sink washing vegetables and I'm gonna save these greens because we can use them for something else see we're starting to get a mixture some get some color in there probably should have used a clear bowl but that's all right too Campari tomatoes they're uh, small sweet a lot like a lot of flavor a lot like a grape tomato or cherry tomato but they're really mm, really nice and fresh Ooh, and I got a new knife it's kind of weird getting used to it because I'm used to my big knives but I'll get used to it so I'm gonna do a little more chopping and I'll see you back here in just a just a few You're watching OCTV, Oxford Community Television, serving Oxford, Addison Township, and the village of Leonard. Okay, we're back. I've got a little more chopping to do. I want to add my spinach. And uh, then we're going to start putting this together, and I'm going to make a whipped herb butter. So one of the things I do up here at the lodge, you will never get cold, solid butter that when you try to drag it across your roll, it rips it up. I make, I serve them plain, just butter. I do them for breakfast with honey and cinnamon and different seasonings. Do them savory for dinner, and we'll do one tonight, so I'll show you how, how easy it is. And believe me, it will really impress your guests. Now I've chosen, once again, <coughs> excuse me, I've chosen to use spinach I've made the pasta toss using some other greens like dandelion and such. Uh, they're a little too strong in flavor and they kind of tend to take over everything else. So if you want, and I have done it this way, use some spinach and some kale, like three to one. If you use, you know, three cups of spinach, use one cup of kale. It gives it a little more texture, but it doesn't tend to take over the whole salad. Unless, of course, you're a kale lover, in which case go for it. But try different greens, especially now, as I said, when we're getting into the nice weather. 
and more and more fresh produce is becoming available. Take advantage of it. Get off the iceberg lettuce. Um, have some fun. Try some different things. So many things have, I mean, they have different flavors. You get greens, like dandelion greens tend to be very bitter unless you put like an Italian dressing on them. And then they become a whole different thing. Some greens are very peppery. There's just so many different ways you can experiment. And yes, the stems of the spinach are going home to my guinea pig because that's what we do. I think we need some green pepper in here. So let's chop up some green pepper. And what else is going on? We've already got people inquiring about visiting for the holidays. I had uh, a gal call yesterday who has out-of-town guests coming for a graduation party and they will be staying with us because we're close to home and that way they're not having to drive all the way to Lapeer or Inlay City to find a hotel. Let me check my pasta. So those are things to keep in mind. You know, it's not just about scrapbooking and wine dinners and such. We have a lot of different ways we can accommodate. Um, as I've said before, we really don't do kids. We're not set up really to do kids. And uh, we don't like a lot of noise. But past that, give me a call. If, if there's something we can't do or it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. But you might want to come up and take a look and see what we can do. Isn't that beautiful? I think we need some fresh parsley. I think we need some more pea pods. And I just completely hid that. I know how you love my chopping. <laughs> Today I have oh, Italian parsley. It's more of a flat leaf and it's, mm, it's got that wonderful peppery oregano thing going on. <clears throat> now I know a lot of people tell you never use scissors on, on greens and on herbs, but you know, here in the kitchen, one of the things I'm always trying to get across is that you can create something like this quickly. If you have the time and you you know, it's, it can be very zen to, to stand and individually chop and all that, and I do that all the time. But our whole point here is get, making it all happen very quickly and delicious. Oh, oh, that parsley. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what it needed. Now, one little thing, even though I'm going to dress it separately, I'm going to add some lemon juice. Honestly, I don't know how this happens. So I did a little talking to you there. But, like I said, unless something has gone bad, I don't throw it out. I generally find a way to use it. So, <laughs> there we go. Now, I'm just going to season <clears throat> slightly the greens and such before the pasta comes. Because the pasta, we're going to drain it and run cold water on it to stop the cooking. So today, I'm going to use a little bit of my pink Himalayan salt and some black pepper and then some Tuscan herbs. These are wonderful. This is rosemary and oregano and basil and it's got some essential oils that are in it then dried down when the herbs are dried and it just gives you just a wonderful taste. It's I don't know, somebody else blended it, I should, but it's wonderful stuff, and oh, that is so fresh. If you were standing here right now, you would say, that is so fresh. All right, let me check my pasta. Now, for, pa for pasta salad, you don't want the pasta to get real cooked. They, you know, go more for more of an al dente, um, a little bit firmer because it's going to be chilled and it stands up better. If you overcook it, it'll get kind of gloppy on you, and you don't want that. So, let's see where we are there. Oh, it's hot. Mmm, perfect. Oh, I should have some broccoli. We can throw some broccoli in there, too. Now, the pasta, so long as it's hot, it does tend to continue cooking. So I want to get it into a colander or a strainer. I can't see it right now because it's steamed. 
and then I want to hit it with cold water to stop that process and that'll keep the pasta nice and firm the way I wanted it when I tasted it. There we go. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So I'm going to let that sit there and drain for just a moment while I chop up some broccoli. I'd forgotten I had this. So I think we need some broccoli in our salad. Now these obviously I haven't washed out yet, so I'm going to do that right now because the last thing you want is sand in your pasta salad. Let's get ahead of this going. Mm. It's funny, the number of people that I make this for that say, oh, I hate broccoli, I hate pea pods, I hate celery. But you put it all together, you dress it up nice, and it's a whole different thing. So I'm going to chop up my broccoli and get it in here. And when we come back, we'll finish with the pasta, we'll talk about dressing, and we'll whip some butter. So that's what we'll do. Now make sure your broccoli pieces, by the way, are not too big, because you don't want to have to people to have, everything should be bite-sized, in other words. You don't want people to have to stop and cut them. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll be here chopping until you get back. And then, oh. Okay, I've got my broccoli. You want to bring all the smaller stuff up from the bottom. I think we need some more tomato in there. Don't you? And I'm using my new little paring knife so I can get used to it. But we need a little bit more tomato. Except it's giving me a hard time. Okay, let's go back to the one I'm used to. There we go. Big, nice chunks of fresh tomato, and soon we'll be getting our Michigan tomatoes and we can start making BLTs. <laughs> really, summer in Michigan. It's, it's what we deserve after dealing with winter in Michigan, I suppose. All right, some more tomato. There we go. Give it a little zhuzh. Now my pasta is nice and drained. I salted the water when I cooked the pasta, so I don't have to season it now. You don't want to let it sit too long because it will start to get stuck together. And now, I'm going to toss in our pasta, give it a little shake. Oh, that pasta hits the rest of it and releases more and more. I'm having a good lunch today. All right. And it's pretty. Now at this point, if you're taking it to a party and you're making a big bowl, Go ahead and dress it, but when I make it at home, I do it just like this. I put it in the oven, in the oven, in the fridge, covered, and when Chris comes home or I need a quick thing, I just pour some in a bowl and grab whatever dressing I'm in the mood for so you're not locked into any one thing. But uh, today, I'm going to use some of my house-made raspberry vinaigrette, which is very simple smells good. It's, I cook down fresh raspberries and then I blend in, in this case, it was either balsamic, no, it was pomegranate balsamic vinegar and olive oil. And that's it. I can keep, this is a Sabroso bottle that I boiled and sterilized. And what I usually do is I dress it to be ready to take to wherever I'm going. And I always take extra dressing with me because I don't want to overdress this and have it be a big gloppy mess. But I do want to get that flavor through. In this way, if I take extra, people can have a taste of that also. And <laughs> yum, 
yum, yum. Now that is something that you would be proud to take to a picnic and show off and have everybody saying, Where, what's your recipe? And you say, well, I clean out the refrigerator and this is what happens. So there's our pasta salad. And I'm going to whip up some butter. It's got a little... Now, if you let your butter sit out at room temperature, it pretty much softens down to where you need it to be. If it doesn't soften quickly enough, put it in the microwave, but like for seven or eight second intervals, because you don't want it to melt, because then you kind of have to start over. So, and because it's, it's butter and herbs, it keeps really well. You can stick it in the fridge when you're done. I like to always have it on hand warm, but you know, as we get into the summer months and depending on what you blend in, you want to keep an eye on it because you don't want something in it to spoil. But at our house, it doesn't last terribly long, so I don't really have to worry about that. So, soften that up. I think we're going to do some parsley. I'm going to chop this a little bit finer than we did in the salad. So while I'm chopping and blending here, I'll, I'll do my shtick. Remember, I'm Connie from Connie's Kitchen here at Treetop Lodge on OCTV. And my phone number is 248-933-4579. Treetop Lodge Oxford on Facebook. My email is stormy3958 at att.net. And we are actually getting close to having a finished website that you'll be able to go and access all the information about the lodge, what we do here, see photos. I actually looked at a rough draft of it last night, and it's, it's coming. So I know it's been a while in the making. I'm not technical. I cook. So I'm adding in, I know I always use these a lot, a little bit of the Italian herbs because I didn't have oregano and such, and I wanted to get a little bit more of that into the butter. And then we have this beautiful, fresh, whipped butter that you can use on your bread or rolls. You can throw these into this into potatoes when you make it, when you make mashed potatoes or twice bakes. It's just a little bit more than just plain butter. And because there's a lot more flavor, you'll find you use less. So that's always a good thing too. So there we have it. I'm going to grab a plate. Excuse me. And this is my lunch. So I'm going to set it up, give this another toss before you serve it. Look at that. Look at that. And you get a little bit of everything there. You've got color, you've got healthy greens. And you know, today I used spinach and broccoli, tomatoes, tomatillos. You can, like I said, throw in whatever you have in the fridge. Different types of onion, celery. I've got some pea pods in here. Some of the pasta. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And, so I was running low on time this morning. This is currently becoming a big favorite. My husband loves these, the pretzel rolls. So I picked up some fresh pretzel rolls. Oh, and they are nice and fresh too. And I'm gonna split that. And soon we will, I'll get more shows up. You'll see, see some new shows soon. It's just that we have been, thankfully, just that busy that I just uh, hadn't had a time to arrange it. But I'm getting back on track here and I'm going to, uh, I think what we're going to start doing is actually start hit filming some episodes while we have events going on. So then you can begin to see what goes into say a seven course wine dinner that we prepare here. A little bit of butter on the side of the plate and we have lunch. Is that beautiful? I know it. I mean, I'm starving, and this is going to taste great to me today. So, again, just uh, join us up here. Give me a call. We do tours all the time. I have someone coming up this afternoon, and I'm going to do that. And we're going to continue to create fun, healthy, easy to prepare, easy to serve meals, snacks. And one of these days, I'll do sorbet. Once I figure it out, we'll do it right here. So everybody can do it. So come on back. Join me. Um, have lunch, have dinner, have a weekend, whatever you want to do. Now, I'm going to have lunch. So, there you have it. We'll see you again soon on Connie's Kitchen. Mm-hmm-hmm.
You're watching OCTV, Oxford Community Television, serving Oxford, Addison Township, and the Village of Leonard. At Oakland County Parks and Recreation, we value what you value. Family relationships, community connections, good health, environmental stewardship, and economic stability. Oakland County residents and businesses have invested in preserving nearly 7,000 acres of parkland. Since 1966, 13 parks and golf courses have been acquired maintained and improved. Oakland County Parks and Facilities are made possible by millage funds supported by Oakland County residents. For a home valued at $200,000, the homeowner pays less than $25 per year to support the Oakland County Parks. With every generation, families create lifelong memories at Oakland County's award-winning parks. From exciting summer escapades and stories around the campfire to brisk fall walks on wooded trails and snowy winter outings, the outdoors beckons year-round. It's time to get up, get out, and get going at the Oakland County Parks. Active recreation options abound. Cross-country ski or mountain bike on tree-line trails. Scale the rock climbing wall. Get your kicks with soccer at several sports fields. Row or paddle a boat on four picturesque inland lakes. It's an easy journey. Most parks are just a short drive away. A quick tip, all our parks and golf courses end in Oaks. To find your favorite, just go to DestinationOakland.com. Click to pick Oceans of Motion water parks at Red Oaks and Waterford Oaks, the Wint Nature Center at Independence Oaks, Teen Adventures, and even Entertainment to go. When outdoor adventures on your list, there's fishing, beaches, boating, playgrounds, and seasonal hunting. The campgrounds at Addison Oaks and Groveland Oaks feel like being up north with plenty of recreation options. Want to get fit? Hit the trails! Oakland County Parks boasts more than 68 miles for strolling, walking, hiking and running, biking, or horseback riding. If the links are your lure, five golf courses, including premier course Lion Oaks, are conveniently located. Make Glen Oaks or White Lake Oaks your home course, get an up north feel at Springfield Oaks, or play a quick nine at Red Oaks. Our recreation lineup rocks. Learn to swim. Experience an outdoor adventures camp. Take the fast track at BMX. Or gain new lifelong skills. Everyone's included. Individuals with disabilities participate in dozens of adaptive opportunities, including a new fully accessible playscape, modified golf carts, and annual events. There's always something special going on at Oakland County Parks, whether it's a classic car show, the Oakland County Fair, a senior golf tournament, or the Ellis Barn Festival. Being green is an everyday practice with nature interpretive programs, wildlife habitat protection, reduction of invasive species, and stormwater management.